Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to explore a very important and useful technique in electronics called source transformation. If you are new to circuit analysis, this concept will become one of the most valuable tools in your toolkit. We will break down everything you see on the screen, step by step, so that by the end, you will have a solid understanding of what source transformation is and how to use it. Let's begin by looking at the title at the top of the image, written in bright cyan, source transformation. Beneath the title, we have a very important sentence in yellow, which is the core principle of this entire topic. It says, a practical voltage source can always be replaced by its equivalent practical current source and vice versa. This single sentence contains a few key ideas, so let's unpack them one by one. First, what is a practical voltage source? Let's turn our attention to the diagram on the left, which is labeled FIG. Practical voltage source. In the real world, no voltage source, like a battery or a power supply, is perfect. A perfect, or ideal, voltage source would provide a constant voltage no matter what. But real sources have a small amount of internal resistance. This diagram is a model that represents a real world, or practical, voltage source. It has two components connected in a line, which we call a series connection. The first component is a circle with a plus sign at the top and a minus sign at the bottom. This symbol represents an ideal voltage source. It's the part that produces the voltage. We'll call this voltage V. The second component, connected right next to it, is a zigzag line labeled R. This symbol represents a resistor. This resistor R represents the internal resistance of the source. So, a practical voltage source is simply an ideal voltage source V connected in series with a resistor R. The entire combination provides power to an external circuit through the two connection points, or terminals, labeled A and B. Now, let's look at the second key phrase, practical current source. If we look at the diagram on the right, labeled FIG, equivalent practical current source, we see the model for this. Just like with voltage sources, real-world current sources are not perfect. A practical current source is a model that includes this imperfection. It also has two components, but this time they are connected side by side, which we call a parallel connection. The first component is a circle with an arrow inside it. This is the symbol for an ideal current source. It's the part that produces a constant flow of current. We'll call this current I. The arrow shows the direction the current flows, which in this diagram is upwards. The second component is the same zigzag line, or resistor, also labeled R. It is connected in parallel with the current source. So, a practical current source is an ideal current source I connected in parallel with a resistor R. The most powerful word in our main sentence is equivalent. It means that from the perspective of any circuit connected to terminals A and B, these two different sources, the voltage source on the left and the current source on the right, are indistinguishable. They will deliver the exact same voltage and current to the external circuit. This is why we can replace one with the other. Finally, the phrase and vice versa means this is a two-way street. We can transform a voltage source into a current source, and we can also transform a current source back into a voltage source. The bright blue double-headed arrow between the two diagrams visually represents this reversible process. Now for the most important part, how do we perform the transformation? The rules for the transformation come from the most fundamental law in electronics, Ohm's law. Let's go from left to right, transforming a voltage source into a current source. Imagine we have the practical voltage source on the left. We know its voltage, V, and its series resistance, R. We want to find its equivalent current source. Step 1, the resistor. This is the easy part. The resistor R in the new circuit has the exact same value as the resistor in the old circuit. The only thing that changes is its position. It moves from being in series with the voltage source to being in parallel with the new current source. Step 2, the value of the current. How do we calculate the current I for our new source? The diagram on the right shows us the formula, I equals V divided by R. To get the value of the new current source, you simply take the voltage V from the original source and divide it by its series resistance R. Step 3, the direction of the current. This is a very important detail. Look at the original voltage source. 
the plus sign is at the top. The rule is, the arrow of the equivalent current source must point towards the positive terminal of the original voltage source. Since the plus sign is at the top, near terminal A, the arrow in our new current source points up. Now, let's go from right to left, transforming a current source into a voltage source. Imagine we start with the practical current source on the right. We know its current, I, and its parallel resistance, R. Step 1, the resistor. Again, the resistor R keeps its value. It just moves from being in parallel with the current source to being in series with the new voltage source. Step 2, the value of the voltage. How do we calculate the voltage V for our new source? The diagram on the left shows us the formula, V equals I multiplied by R. To get the value of the new voltage source, you take the current I from the original source and multiply it by its parallel resistance R. Step 3, the polarity of the voltage. This is the reverse of the rule we just learned. Look at the original current source. The arrow points up, towards terminal A. The rule is, the positive terminal, the plus sign, of the new voltage source must be placed on the side the arrow was pointing to. Since the arrow points up, the plus sign of our new voltage source goes at the top, and the minus sign goes at the bottom. And that's the entire process. By following these simple rules, you can swap between these two equivalent forms. This is incredibly useful for simplifying complex circuits, often allowing you to combine resistors that were previously difficult to deal with, making the overall circuit much easier to solve.